Greetings and salutations horror movie fans, my name is Gilbert Ybarra and welcome back to the Attic Review. On today's episode of TAR, I want to talk about all the hype of Art the Clown and where he began in 2013's All Hallows Eve. Terrifier 2 is quickly making Art the Clown a rising icon in the horror world this year, but his origins can be traced all the way back to 2008. And yes, all of you on my YouTube shorts insisting on correcting me about Art's origins, Come on, Playboy, I already knew about the Ninth Circle short film and the OG Terrifier. Not to be confused with Terrifier the movie that hasn't come out yet, but just a short film. But all those shorts and some are rounded up for this unlikely underground hit, All Hallows Eve. This anthology has three stories overall, and they are centered around a babysitter that when checking the candy that the children had rounded up, they discover a mysterious VHS tape. A VHS tape, I know, bear with me, but to our delight, they check the contents and it is riddled with Arthur Clown and some revolting footage. <laughs> and you might notice that Arthur Clown looks a little bit different here, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, you already know what it is here at the Attic Review. Three acts, I'm gonna break them down, see what I loved and disloved about each part, how it felt about the movie overall, so real quick, subscribe and let's get into All Hallows Eve. Halloween night is coming to an end, and babysitter Sarah finds that weird VHS tape in the kids' candy bag, and I know what you're thinking, who uses VHS tapes anymore, but who cares? Let's see what's on it. Sarah, using horrible babysitting judgment, decides to interrupt Night of the Living Dead to put on the tape, and immediately, we see that freaky deaky Art the Clown. And he is roaming around the train station, straight up bothering some poor young lady all by her lonesome. And by bothering, I mean harassing. And that quickly escalates to kidnapping as he takes her away to a kidnapping room occupied by two other girls. Long story short here, the gals try to escape but that is futile as some demonic figure is waiting for some dismemberment to stop that shit. And we figure out that this situation is about Satan committing satanic assault. <laughs> yeah, we escape that segment, thank God, as babysitter Sarah has had enough. She shoes the kids off to bed and we end act one. Act 1 was great in establishing shaky nerves and an instant shot of fear as we get the first glimpse of art. Pace is nicely set. As the ninth circle is showing it, oh, we can tell this is going to be rough after that gruesome start. No real issues here with Act 1 aside from the awful kid acting, but besides that, great start. And again though, did you notice that Arthur Clown looks a little different here? Let's roll into Act 2 after you subscribe and tell some friends of course. Act 2, we see Sarah putting the kids down for bed after acting like little snots all evening. She's on the phone venting to a friend about the evening and the contents of the film and after some wine calms down her nerves, she's ready for round 2 with the tape. Big mistake, Sarah. Actually, scratch that because this second segment is lame and boring as shit. Definitely the low light of All Hallows Eve. Here, we have a young woman that just moved out to the countryside and BAM! A bright light hits the earth and all of a sudden we have an E.T. stalking mall bugger just roaming around her house. And that's it. Just her being chased around by an alien. Just blah. Thankfully, Sarah turns that shit off, but <gasps> she thinks she sees something going up the stairwell. She thinks it's the kids messing around, but she gets up there. <gasps> They're sleeping, so is she tripping or not? I'll say this. That crappy second segment is made up for by the creepiness that Sarah is experiencing as we end Act 2. What did I love about Act 2? Subscribing to the Attic Review. Wait, whoa, whoa. That's what I love for you guys to do. Subscribing to my beloved Tar. Anyways, Act 2 segment was very bland, but I loved the amped up atmosphere. And although the second segment on the VHS tape really didn't include art, we still get a glimpse of him and again, doesn't he look a little different? My dislike for Act 2 was that obvious, weak-ass middle filler story. However, there was enough tension to get us antsy enough for that vile Act 3. Act 3, y'all, and Art the Clown is not messing around in this last story, as this is the OG, grainy as hell, Terrifier story. Yet another young woman by herself on a tiring road trip, and she is out of energy and gas. So she pulls off to a gas station at the intersection of a middle and nowhere. And in a statement that I take as God must hate her, she stumbles upon Art the Clown. This guy is getting kicked out by a furious employee after Art decides to display his art all over a bathroom wall, which is disgusting. But Art ain't having that shit, so he lets the guy have it. 
After witnessing the grisly massacre, the horrified girl tries to warp speed it out of there, but her efforts to escape become maddening and hopeless as... <sighs> I'll let you watch what happens. Now, Sarah is on high alert, and the true madness begins as Art the Clown begins to taunt her through the television. And then everything turns into a nightmarish hell that I'll let you enjoy. So Act 3 and overall how I felt about the movie? Well, let's see. Wow, Act 3 ended in such gross fashion that I was ill till I realized that this was just a start for art. Speaking of start and art, I told you we were going to talk about this earlier. So this is not David Howard Thornton of Terrifier and Terrifier 2 fame. Slight difference but still a great performance from Mike Gianelli. He was the mold so thank you. That Terrifier segment was a bold statement from the director that says, hey, my art, the clown creation, is a force to be reckoned with. And I think we all saw it this year with Terrifier 2. And the rest of the film was a nice, violent send-off that, in a disturbing way, is to be admired for not giving a shit about how unnecessarily vicious it is. I will say this though, my one quip is more of a warning to the sensitive viewers out there. There is a lot of misogynistic elements in the last segment that I really didn't care to see. It's very unsettling, so there's your warning. Overall, I really enjoyed All Hallows Eve despite its lame second act, and it's exciting to see director Damien Leon get all the accolades that he deserves, and watching Art the Clown rise as an icon is whew, amazing. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching the Attic Review. Go check out All Hallows Eve, subscribe, tell some friends, and smile, tiger.